call me Fuego 93 like me Fire in the sheets, spending summers on the seas Quedo, shit no way how it is going. We want to throw a big shout out to our sponsors, Toomey, Zowie, Intel, and Perrier for making this whole thing possible. The stacks of cash for bringing the players here, and the roof is opening on our first match of the day as the plane takes flight and Miramar is in sight. Let's go now to the breathtaking baritones of Paper Thin and Toby. Thank you so much, Toffees, the amazingly accurate and astute analyst desk coming through big time for us with that awesome, awesome pre-game show they put together. And Toby, we're here. It is finally time, my guy. The weekly finals begin now. And they sure do. Weekly finals is going to be amazing to follow these teams all the way through today and tomorrow and see who are going to be crowned weekly winners or weekly champions will it be a freak of freaks going back to back or will we see new teams charm in and get themselves a big chunk of that prize pool i'm um i'm i'm very curious to, to see how teams will play differently now that we're forcing them to go back and forth and back and forth between formats it um it will be fun to see how teams go back so hopefully playing a little more aggressive and kill heavy here with the super setting circle and then when you then have an east ship like that you just can't do anything with it let's see peng inside finds one but goes down immediately in return and actually oh the flush just gets in mao yi unfortunately can't get more of it those go down but i mean again kills matter now so might as well try and see if you can get some of them crazy falls down so we can quick to flush and now ooh, forever taken down by rust and as well great shooting finds both the knock squeak is there to get both the flushes and that's say a 4 a.m rotation falling apart so it's all these north side teams that were trying to make their way across early that are now starting to trip over one another making their way east yeah and four ants being up on the northern part of the circle definitely benefiting them even though they lost two and those two extra points are going to help soften the blow that early fight against Afrika a bit sdk putting some damage into zenith it's so incredibly difficult when you're in a situation you're outside the circle you go okay what can we do here we have to try and make it center somehow they go but they they know it's too early to go center but there wasn't an alternative. Yes, you can run into SDK, maybe lose one more player, and then you have three more teams to fight on the edge. They wanted to get away from the edge, but unfortunately, because of the circles, I guess you can say ruthlessness, there wasn't anywhere to go, and that's going to be Virtus Pro out in 15th. All right, and doing everything they can as a two-man up here against AAA. It's only JR's left against them. Rustin Martin Squeaky doing a hell of a job here. Some grenades coming out from JR's, trying to see if he could get a knock onto Squeaky. But those are going to come up well short, or at least short enough not to do critical damage. Now JR is going to try to heal up his team. Completely torn asunder over to SDK outside of Buriram's compound. Noadra gets knocked by Hansia from Afrika Freaks. A shoot to kill kind of busy trying to keep the zenith players at bay over on the north and then keeping an eye on what's going around them to the south and the east yeah what and what shoot to kill is doing right now is just trying to make space for themselves they know if the next circle doesn't go to them they'll need to move forward and <laughs> what worse than trying to run towards the next circle if you have three teams trying to do the exact same thing right next to you so make space now making your next rotations most likely on foot more doable in the meantime as you can see as zenith Peeking over the top from the north side. They're getting shot at from afar from their countryman. Purdy Curdy finds one. It's going to be Konaxi to take him down. We saw, of course, great moments from Buriram in the uh, weekly survival matches. And Konaxi, the one to win that 1v2 to get them to the weekly finals. Buriram, they, uh, they have grown on me, to say the very least. And they, as well as ends, are, is another team that I'm looking to see what can, uh, what can deliver here in the weekly finals. Lingdu, he tried. He lasted a while. But out in 13th goes MCG. Yeah, I think going back to Buriram real quick, when this team starts to heat up, they're one of the scariest teams in the world, in my opinion. We've seen how individually talented they are. Just a matter of putting it together at the right place at the right time, kind of getting their heads on straight, making good decisions uh, is sometimes what can hamper them a bit. But when it comes to fighting, uh, I would put them up there with some of the best mechanical teams on the planet. Now, EJ going to be rezzed for a Freak of Freak. Six kills in the bag for them so far. Three for EJ, two for Hansia, one for Hikari. And there you go, Buriram. Farming the edge of that circle. Zenith just completely pinned, and they are no longer long for this lobby. Pat Caps and Oath 
finally, you know, getting that win during the week, playing great the whole time. And a big sigh of relief from them and a lot of confidence, I think, coming into this. Luke catches a bit of damage on that jump with the SLR. As, like you mentioned, SDK really trying to push teams away from them. And now uh, I think Oath might be opting to think about making a move here shortly. And they're going to have to. Everyone needs to cross the road. And, and there, there's only so many places you can go. You can try and go down to where Virtus Pro fell before. And I think that might be a smart play now. We've excluded a lot of the terrain that you could kind of fight them in previously. Oh but three God. teams, oh no. Three teams towards the south that we haven't really discussed all that much because the south it just it's been very quiet down there liquid infantry and gen g all three teams still four alive they hadn't had to use any nade smokes whatever they're now playing in the open on the south side infantry has the compound and, and if this next circle goes anywhere south it's just gonna make it that much more difficult for any of these teams to get down there because they'll be trying to make their way south with teams in the crevasses and dips right next to them yeah, there's there's a lot of dead space around infantry's compound. So the more that their compound stays in it, the more difficult it gets for the teams around them. Hansia going to get a good knock on it to Edie over here with the mini. Finish it as well. So another point in the bag. Seven here already for Afrika Freaks. 35 still left. So they're doing a pretty good job uh, racking in those kill points, taking advantage of the super settings while they can. Now, Oath does have just enough of the edge. They have SDK bearing down on top of them, potentially. Liquid going to start letting loose as well. Clib finds one already. Ibby going to line one up. An easy knock on the Pat Caps there with the mini. And Oath potentially in shambles here shortly. Oh, oh yep. Here comes the pressure from above as well. Ellen does fall too, but plenty of kills found after they lost two players as well. Here comes Uncivil. He wants a piece of the points, but Mixi from the other side says, hold your horses there, mate. It's our kills, not yours. So actually doing a great job right now at forcing STK back. Now they are still within nade distance. I believe one good nade here could be the end of Oath, but in the meantime, <laughs> Liquid, they know that if they want to get these points, they have to be fast about it. Down goes one, down goes two. Snakers burning both teammates they will fall in 10th. I think he got knocked with the Molly in hand, and I guess that's one way to deny points. Yeah, that happens from time to time. And Or it could have <laughs> got, you know, if it's really unlucky, you get shot right as it leaves your hand or something. Oh, P.O., oh, you're just true. sitting for him. Fanatica, Fanatica. Oh, no. You can't stand still that long, and P.O. going to make you pay for it. Luke 12, it's still up on the hill. Circle has moved over to the east, so just a sliver of infantry's compound still in it genji barely in it as well with their compound but they're already opting to move out seeing if they can pick up some kill points i like what genji's doing getting a little active on the map yeah and i mean they know their <clears throat> excuse me they know their compound is getting shifted out and they're trying to make the run up towards the hill on the east side they need space and uh, i think them trying to sweep the east is a very smart way to do so if they can get the side of the circle where their back is clear that would be a absolute dream scenario for them now luke 1v3 trying to contain Burry Ram. That's, that's a little bit of a, a tall order, especially with TSG peeking from the other side. But the issue for STK is now, while they tried to take the fight over to Oath, that didn't really grant them any new spot in the circle. Blue is already starting to close in with Purdy Curdy down already. They have to take fights to teams, and they are outnumbered. Yeah, look at these angles that Afrika has. These two kind of valleys that are funneling right into them. And they're going to have to hold this pretty well against two very, very good teams. Two mechanically gifted teams in SDK and Buriram United. Let's see if they can get it done here. Circle will force the issue very, very shortly. Let's not forget about TSG as well over on the eastern side of all of this action. Noadra, in fact, going to fall to the blue and that is going to be the end for him. Now Liquid steps up, and they're even a getting into this. They're on the back of Afrika. Some damage done from EJ. EJ really all over the place, left and right, controlling, trying to control a lot of space. Wow, I know. Next, we didn't see it on camera. He just got a drive by, and that just gave them the entire east of the circle for free. Great play, and then. I mean, for Afrika, they have been very impressive in getting the amount of kills they have already with teams around them all the time. They've been playing on foot, they've been trying to maneuver around to make space for themselves, and they've been succeeding in doing so. Hansia now does fall, and Ibi goes down as well. More players to fall here on the west side as the circle keeps closing on in. There's really only space for one team on this side, and right now, Liquid in a pretty good spot for that name. Oh, had it gone inside, there would have been the death of Liquid, but they stay alive for now. Yeah, I love that infantry sends two out to third party. That's a relatively safe third party. EJ going to be the last one to finish off God Meow. Five kills now, nine total for Afrika. Huge round for EJ, the in-game leader for Afrika. 
and a very talented fragger on top of all of it. I love what Infantry and Genji are doing, getting out of their compounds, getting active on the map. Uh, really impressive to see that. But now, he, for I think for Infantry, they realize, okay, we've done what we can. We controlled the space. We know what's going on. Let's regroup. Let's mm. get ready for this next circle uh, and be ready to push to wherever it goes together as a team. Freak up getting himself nine kills that game. Very, very impressive. Again, given the situation they were in and where they were sitting, they really couldn't do a whole lot to push anyone. They were just forced to play whack-a-mole and wait for people to come to them. And the, like that, they managed to do that so well. Oh, I think you're dead, Norns. Yep, he is. Stay trade falls in six, five teams left alive. And again, Gen.G continuing the push on the east side. Incredibly well played by them. They knew when to leave the compound. They knew they had a better team up on that east side, and they just ran them over. Now they have well half the circle to themselves and look at this inventory is getting right behind team liquid taking advantage of the terrain covering them from that east side now and it's going to be nine up behind he's going to find jeems with some help from long skirt oh no he's going to be Ooh. traded by maxi maxi last one alive for team liquid going to underhand a cook grenade a little bit seeing if he could get lucky Zhao yang throws one maxi trying to do some damage to finish it just not able to control the spray well enough taking a whole bunch of damage in the meantime and it's going to be long skirt up over the top finishing the job team liquid out and forth liquid goes down infantry stays alive but they lose one we got three teams left alive genji still four alive and look at the amount of control they've taken ionics staying on the south side to try and take play spoiler down there make sure no one's gonna wrap around the southwest in the meantime esther and loki pushing forward and shantian falls instantly tsg 11 kills it's been a great game for them but i'm not sure they have what it takes to take out genji here because look at the amount of control the korean team has taken they're sitting they were on half the circle before now they're sitting on more like 80 percent of it and they're not gonna allow for infantry or tsg to get in here without having to fight each other first genji are forcing infantry and tsg to fight each other while they claim more and more circle control very very impressive place from the korean yeah, it's really, really smart from them. And it's interesting to note that it was Alpaca during the weekly survival for Gen.G. And they opt to bring Loki back. And I think I want to talk about that maybe a little bit later or leave it for the analyst desk uh, to talk about those roster decisions for Gen.G. We'll get to it eventually. TSG getting in the vehicles. They kind of come down off this hill potentially. And Onyx is a pretty good line and some good shots. Gets the knock on the volley bear. Sia going to go down to Zhao Ying. And it's going to be a 3v4 infantry. Never mind, make that potentially a 4v2 as PO finds a knock on a Zhao Ying Longsker there very quickly though for the res. Gen G moved forward. They knew this open space would be held to cross if they were the ones to do it. And now they went early instead. Let's see. Three versus four. 4v3 in favor of Gen G. They're pushing forward. They know exactly where they have infantry and they have not had to have a close quarter fight yet so they can just plummet nade so because they still have them. Here comes one. One falls. Gen G. Loki finds two. It's just a four. It's 3v1 now. Make that Xiao Yang down. Long skirt is all that's left. Trying to peek over the top. Tries to read out. Not gonna happen. Pio finds the last and Gen G after a very very well thought late game there brings home the win in game number one. Look out, world, your 2019 PGC champions coming alive here. They are looking really strong in that, making great decisions, controlling their area so, so well. The early game, very passive. We saw Peel coming up behind. Infantry never really gets knocked, doesn't get spotted out. Thumbs up. This guy's looking good. And they just backfilled behind infantry and then worked their terrain very, very well there at the end. I think control. Control is the name of the game for them in this situation. They, I mean, they were blessed with a pretty quiet early game alongside with Liquid and...